in the time after King Arthur. Verdant Solitude It was close to prime when Percival's party broke camp. It was an idyllic day, one that we worked so hard to appreciate. It was a day of reckless mirth and celebration in the Celtic forest, where the heat could not penetrate, where every leaf reached for the sun. The point men were given new orders. Find a path in the grass barely seen, a path to verdant solitude where the quiet will breed deep thoughts and joy, for I have had enough of pain and death. We will find this path, my lord. Yes, we shall not fail you. With their mission clear, the point men set off with renewed determination. By noon, they came to a clearing in which an older man was tending a garden. There was something familiar about that man. They passed on to a little house wherein they inquired about lunch. Please come in, I shall prepare some food for you. A lady took them in at once and offered them food. We are grateful for your kindness, allow us to pay you. No, no, I insist, your presence is payment enough. They tried to pay her, but she resisted it with a warm smile. I have been here before. My good lady who treats us so well, I thank you. I am king of the Britons by some little known birthright and so we have cleared the Vikings from your doorstep. Now about that old man in the garden, although his clothes are tattered and hang about him like those of a peasant, I couldn't help noticing what appeared to be some threads of a night tunic pretending to be a sleeve. Who is he and whence he came? Percival's curiosity grew as he pondered the old man's mysterious past. It is a sad story. The man has no memory of his past. He has been here some time now, and when I received him, the lump on his head told me that he'd probably been knocked unconscious and senseless. He soon recovered all but his memory, and took well to the garden. We found some solace in each other's arms growing old as we are together. The lady of the house shared her tale, revealing the old man's tragic circumstances. Perhaps I can refresh his memory. With a determined spirit, Percival decided to take a walk in the half-light dusk, contemplating how he might help the old man recall his past. He walked a once familiar path and saw again the stones that he'd used as a child to sharpen his darts. Suddenly, Percival was young again. This was his forest home. This was where he had first spied the night gods riding by. Oh, how I'd wished to become one. But here my mother had wished to shelter me from the world's evils. Percival remembered when he saw the first knights. He thought them angels, and they had called him the fool. But he persisted, and eventually became one of them as we have seen. Percival was jolted back to the present when the old man walked by, the old gardener. The man patched with a knight's cloth. I want to be a knight! The old man stopped in his tracks and thought for a while, and then began to look up slowly as wave after wave of lost memories returned and swept over his mind. Then he nearly fainted and had to sit on a rock. It was some minutes before old Gawain could compose himself to speak. Percival, how many years ago was it that I called you the young fool here when you wanted to become a knight? Ha, now I am the old fool here. What is this magic you have, my boy? Look at me now, I have exchanged my sword for a garden hoe. Ha, perhaps this is what I would have become if not for knighthood. Indeed, my boy, you have a magic about you. Gawain, Merlin left me with a touch of magic, or so he led me to believe. But not matter, for you have returned. You are welcome to retire to my castle to live out your years in peace. I found peace here, Percival but still I will come to your castle one last time to train your new generation of knights for you. It was you, Gawain, that tamed the questing beast, wasn't it? Yes, Percival, it was I. 